Welcome to the hottest movie review on the internet today, the A-List Review. I'm your host, the Game Changer, Wes Troop. This week I've got two hot new releases in the theaters for you, Focus, Focus, yes, and The Lazarus Effect, and I'm going to be looking at three movies that just hit DVD and B-Ray recently, being Big Hero 6, Horrible Bosses 2, and Whiplash. So definitely stay tuned for those. So we're going to kick off this week's show with my review of Focus. After a chance meeting in a hotel, a grade A con artist becomes a mentor to a beautiful common thief and they perform a big time heist in New Orleans. Years later, the con man finds himself working another heist and the girl ends up being involved much to his surprise. So what did I think of Focus? I thought it's a slick and entertaining drama. Some of the scenes where the criminals are pickpocketing their unsuspecting victims are almost mind-blowing with how fast they hit their marks. The film is basically cut into two halves, the first being the New Orleans heist and the second being a big-time race car operation. I thought the first half is better, and while the second droops a bit, it's still fun. The Super Bowl gambling scene is one of the most amusing I've seen in a while, making me anxious in my seat. Uh, not like that woman in the Fifty Shades of Grey story. Anyway, the script packs in a few eye-rolling makeout scenes, but also a big number of twists and turns. The audience isn't quite sure who's playing who until the final reveal. Will Smith stars as Nicky Spurgeon, the experienced con man and leader of a group of thieves thrown off his game by an attractive woman, aren't we all? The seductive Margot Robbie plays Jess Barrett, Nicky's new protege and love interest who might have a few cards up her own sleeve as well. The rest of the cast includes Rodrigo Sancho as Garriga, the billionaire race car owner Nicky ends up doing a job for, Gerald McRaney as Owens, Garriga's right-hand man who has his eye on Nicky, and B.D. Wong as Lee Wan, an eccentric high-stakes gambler Nicky plays with at the Super Bowl. Focus may make a few missteps here or there, but ends up being a mostly enjoyable heist flick. I'm going to give it the rating of do it. Yes, I uh, really enjoyed Focus. I had heard some mixed things about it, but I thought it was pretty darn good. Coming up next, our other release this week in theaters is a new horror film. Yeah, I guess you could call it that. Here are my thoughts on The Lazarus Effect. A group of scientific researchers are on the brink of being able to bring something, or someone, back from the dead. After an experiment with a new serum, they bring a dog back to life with minor issues. When they try to conduct the experiment again, one of the researchers is electrocuted and her fiancé makes the call to use the serum on her. Success! She's alive again, but something is very, very wrong. <laughs> So what did I think of The Lazarus Effect? I thought it's a horrendous horror flick. It has all the normal cheap scares to try to get you to jump, but it doesn't succeed often. We're given every cliche from the horror movie checklist, including lights going out, check, a doofus security guard, check, and even some awful opera music on a record player, which I have to admit, I thought, when it came on, it was someone farting in the, in the movie, and then it wouldn't have surprised me. Some of the scenes that are supposed to shock or scare us made me laugh, and I wasn't the only one in the theater. This isn't a shaky cam film, but for some dumb reason, it throws in footage from security cameras on a whim. I like the idea of this movie, and it could have been good, but everything just goes wrong. The setup takes forever and keeps us wanting something exciting to happen, and it just doesn't really get there. Also, we're unsure what's really going on with the main character. We're told she can use more than 10% of her brain, much like Lucy last year, but she's also possessed and somehow can bring people into her dreams. Um, yeah. And we're given a ridiculous finale that had me face-palming. 
The likable cast stars Mark Duplass as Frank, the head of the project looking to bring subjects back to life, and Olivia Wilde as Zoe, Frank's fiance, who comes back from the dead as a changed woman. The rest of the team include Donald Glover as Nico, who has feelings for Zoe, Evan Peters as Clay, who likes to smoke an e-cig even though he's not supposed to, and Sarah Bolger as Ava, a student who signs on to document the project. The Lazarus Effect is a film that's dead on arrival and will be sure to snag a spot on my worst of the year list. I'm going to give it the rating of Suck It. Yes, this is... Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is... Yeah, let's just put it there. Yes, after that big glass of suck, we're going to need something better. So... Let's jump on to our DVD and B-Ray releases uh, that came out recently. Uh, this is a Disney Marvel crossover type collaboration, if you will. Uh, here are my thoughts on Big Hero 6. After being accepted to the same technology university as his brother, a smart teen named Hero teams up with a healthcare companion robot and a team of interesting students to face off against a villain who stole Hero's technology. So what did I think of Big Hero 6? I thought it's a first-rate animated feature. It's based on a Marvel comic series and works wonderfully as an animated feature. The animation is admirable, as always, coming from Walt Disney Studios and is a feast for the eyes. There is a nice amount of action as well, and was more exciting than some of the lesser superhero movies released last year. I'm looking at you, Spidey. The film also has great humor to it, between the fun eclectic characters interacting and trying to become heroes, and of course Baymax the robot getting some of the best jokes. The relationship between Hero and his brother, and Hero and Baymax are very compelling as well. Prepare to possibly shed a tear or two. I know I almost did. <laughs> the voice cast does great work here, and as well, starring Ryan Potter as Hiro Hamada, the 14-year-old robotics expert who's looking to take down a thief, Scott Adsit as Baymax, the inflatable healthcare robot Hiro trains to become his sidekick, Daniel Henney as Tadashi, Hiro's brother who wants to keep him out of trouble and wants him to make something of himself, Maya Rudolph as Aunt Cass, the boy's aunt who took them in when their parents died, you're surprised? And TJ Miller as Fred, Jamie Chung as Gogo, -Go, Damon Wayans Jr. as Wasabi, and Genesius Rodriguez as Honey Lemon, Tadashi's friends who suit up with Hero to take down the masked man. While I love Tangled, Wreck-It Ralph, and of course Frozen more, Big Hero 6 does not disappoint and keeps Disney's hot streak alive while giving us one of the best films of the year. Last year. <laughs> Fist bump! Blah. I'm going to give it the rating of A-List Approved. It gets the A-List seal of approval. Did Big Hero 6 deserve that Oscar? I think so. I liked How to Train Your Dragon 2 and, uh, you know, Lego Movie uh, last year, pretty much in the same category as this, uh, as much as far as I liked it, but Big Hero 6 is pretty awesome. Uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes we have visitors here on the A-List. <laughs> right here is Tito the Cat. So uh, thanks for stopping by, Tito. You want to tell us a few things? Not really. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, sometimes there's comedies that don't exactly deserve a sequel. Will this be one? Will this not be one? This is my review of Horrible Bosses 2. After the hijinks of the first film, the guys have now started their own company where they can be their own bosses. They've created an invention called the Shower Buddy and end up selling it to a big time investor who screws them over. Out of revenge, the guys kidnap the investor's grown up son who wants to get back at his dad as well. So what did I think of Horrible Bosses 2? I thought it's an unsatisfying comedy sequel. I was a fan of the first Horrible Bosses and thought it was fun and somewhat unique. This sequel, however, doesn't deliver the goods. There are a few funny moments here and there, but definitely not as many as there should be. I only found myself laughing at a few bits. In fact, I found more things annoying than they were laugh-inducing. The film is also raunchier than I remember the first being, especially when the characters sit in at a sex addict meeting. Just because you say dirty things doesn't necessarily mean it's funny. 
I didn't even really laugh at the bloopers during the end credits. That's when you know you're in trouble. The story is more of the same from the first, but this time takes a more 9 to 5 route. Working 9 to 5. Yeah, anyway. Jason Bateman, Charlie Day, and Jason Sudeikis reprise their roles as Nick, Dale, and Kirk, who start their own business and end up getting into more escapades. Christoph Waltz as Bert Hansen, the investor who steals their idea. Chris Pine as Rex, Bert's big shot son, who ki the guys kidnap. Kevin Spacey as Dave Harkin, Nick's former boss who's now in jail. Jennifer Aniston as Dr. Julia Harris, Dale's former sex addicted boss. And Jamie Foxx as Dean, Mother Effer Jones, who helps the guys plan the kidnapping. Well, it can be amusing occasionally, Horrible Bosses 2 is more of a disappointing cash-in. I'm gonna give it the rating of meh. You know, it has its moments, but eh, not so great. And finally, perhaps one of the most buzzed about movies this whole award season, mostly about J.K. Simmons' performance. And did it deserve the Oscar? Oh, of course it did. Here is my review of Whiplash. A first-year student at an elite conservatory of music aspires to be one of the greats. He's chosen by the most imposing conductor at the Institute to play for the studio band. So what did I think of Whiplash? I thought it's a brilliant drama. Playing in my junior high school band, I found this to be quite an interesting subject. There are teachers out there that like to push their students, but possibly none like the one seen in this film. The instructor feels greatness can only be obtained by pushing the students to their breaking point and cause them to find talent they didn't even realize that they had. The ways he does it are quite questionable, such as embarrassing band members in front of their peers, to throwing objects at students' heads and slapping them until they play it right. There are some great visuals as well, most notably seeing the blood and sweat on the cymbals and drums. Miles Teller does great work as Andrew Neiman, the freshman who's become obsessed with doing the best he possibly can for his new conductor and becomes exceedingly frustrated when he disappoints the band. J.K. Simmons won the Best Supporting Actor Oscar uh, this year for playing Terrence Fletcher, the brutal teacher at the conservatory who crosses quite a few lines for success. The exchanges between Teller and Simmons are a treat and some of the most uneasy I've seen in a while. Also in the cast, Melissa Benoist as Nicole, the college student Andrew begins to date, and Paul Reiser as Jim, Andrew's caring dad and best friend. Full of humor, emotion, and great music, Whiplash is a unique experience that gets a standing ovation from me. I'm going to give it the rating of A-list approved. It gets the A-list seal of approval. If you are a fan of cinema, even if you're not that big of a fan of cinema, I suggest you go out and rent, buy, whatever, Whiplash. Watch it now. Well, that does it for this week. Next week, I'll be back with my reviews of I Am Chappie and Unfinished Business in theaters. Uh, yeah, I'll finish my business. You watch me. And uh, then finally, a few more DVD and Blu-ray releases. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe to me right here on YouTube youtube.com slash westside of 515 you can like me on facebook facebook.com slash west troop a list and follow me on the twitter and the instagram at west a list and of course you can buy my book the a list review 2014 movie yearbook over 150 reviews only ten dollars so contact me through facebook or twitter if you're interested until next time troop out